Good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to episode 65 of the Cloudcast. We're coming to you live from the AWS reInvent conference in Las Vegas, and I'm sitting here today with the grand poobah of <laughs> Cloudability, Matt Ellis, um, CEO and, uh, and founder. And it's been a while since we had you on, on the show. I think it was about 30 shows or so ago, and... The company was much smaller at the time, and we, we talked about all the interesting and really cool things your company did, and it was amazing to see the growth of your company and a lot of the new offerings and, and how it all really relates to the AWS conference here in general. So we just want to talk a little bit about that today, and so if you want to introduce yourself and, and let's talk a little bit about your company and what's going on. Yeah, so uh, it's great to be here, and uh, I'm Matt Ellis, a CEO and founder of Cloudability. And so, so Matt, what did you think of the big announcements from the keynote this morning? There was two big announcements there. One of them was the new service offering, and the other one was the, the price decrease. Yeah, and of course, uh, Amazon have been telegraphing a few other tweaks to their service around this. Uh, in some of the sessions, they're talking about some things that are coming out next week. And uh, it's fantastic for the cloud community to have uh, th these kind of announcements come through. I mean, one of the big problems on running on Amazon, it really was more expensive for storage than having your own. And uh, th these, these changes go a long way to addressing that. It was very exciting. Over a year ago, uh, a terabyte of EBS, your first terabyte of EBS, cost you about $1,200. And now you can get a whole data center, uh, data warehousing product, uh, the Redshift product, for $1,000 a, a year per terabyte. So it's very exciting, and I think there's going to be a lot of take-up with these kind of uh, new, new ideas, new features. Awesome. Awesome. And so... Your company has, has certainly grown mm -hmm. um, over recent months, and what has really spurred that growth? What, what is the issue that, that you are addressing out there, and why the, the rapid growth with your company? Well, we've always had a lot of interest in the product. Um, I mean, one of the things that's enabled the faster growth is, of course, we raised a big uh, Series A over the summer mm -hmm. uh, from Foundry and uh, Silicon Valley Bank, and uh, that's enabled us to really grow as a company. But uh, uh, that manifests itself in many more uh, users and more features. So we just passed $200 million of cloud spend in our system a couple of days ago, uh, 5,000 users, and um, uh, uh, the release of our new products, our analytics product. Okay. And that gives you a daily resolution, hopefully soon hourly resolution, uh, to see just what you're doing on your cloud. So we've always been about bringing all your cost, cost data into one place, over 100 partners supported, uh, but now you can actually li dig into that cost and understand the actual things that are going on. So here's a server you bought. Was it being used? Here's a block of disk you've got. Is it being filled up? And now for the first time, you know, when you find that, that increase in your bill, you can actually go have a constructive conversation with whomever initiated that cost increase and understand whether they're really using it, whether they really need it. And this is all about ROI management or, or continuous IT improvement city is what we call it. And we think that as companies, um, uh, as the cloud evolves, companies that can get the purchasing decisions for IT closer to the end users will make more efficient decisions and will make just a better return on that IT investment, much better return. The problem with this is that it means a much more greater variety of, of IT choices, mm -hmm. a lot more complexity. And of course, you've got to hold, now instead of having 10 IT buyers, if you have 1,000, how do you hold those guys accountable? How do you make sure that they're turning the lights off when they're finished? Sure. And it, it's so interesting to me in the fact that just about every industry I've ever been involved in, you have this initial point where everything starts ramping up and it's so cool and everyone wants to start playing with it. Yeah. But then almost immediately you get sprawl. No matter what it is, you get virtualization sprawl. You right. get cloud sprawl. You get you know, And is that what you're seeing a lot with... with um, a lot of your customers and, and, and are you helping them with really things are growing too fast and they can't control it and you're, help, you're really helping them provide some of that, that framework if you will. Well if you think about any engineering project ever they <laughs> always have a cost overrun. Right. The people who build things they're optimists. Let's build a giant bridge let's build a big tunnel let's make flying machines all right? and, and so they're not really concerned with cost sure. and they're usually optimistic about what they need even to get there so there's an actual pressure that's why you don't have engineers as accountants and vice versa. 
Um, but it's even worse on the cloud now. Of course, everyone's learning how to use it. And it feels to me very much like 1998, 1999. Everyone knew the web was the future. But no one knew really how to do it. And there's a lot of fumbling, a lot of chipping up in the dark as the, the state of the art and the best practices get, become evolved. And um, we're helping people do that. And obviously, with our user base, um, all of our users are concerned with getting more out of their cloud. So I think that what we see um, is much less waste than what's actually going on out there. Uh, a really common conversation we have. Uh, when we started the company, we were given free office space by Puppet Labs. And uh, we saw a load, load of servers turn up in the office. And we asked the guy with the servers, uh, Zach, we said, uh, why have you got the servers? Why don't you use the cloud? He goes, we don't really use the cloud much around here. And, <laughs> and around the corner was a guy spending five grand a month on cloud testing. Oh, that's and, funny. And this is when Puppet had like 40, 50 people. Yeah. And you know, even in, everyone's on one floor, everyone gets on really well together, talk to each other. Even then there was this idea that we don't do much on the cloud. Right. So those people are the ones who really uh, are the ones we want to get to meet to help them get a handle on the cloud, to understand how much they're spending and then to understand that they're spending it right. Mm-hmm. I understand. And... One of the big things is the way your company has evolved. It is also, even though we are at the AWS conference, you're doing more than AWS. Oh, yes. And so, so tell me a little bit about where are you seeing growth from all of the, the vendors that are out there? And, and what are some of them that you consider other than obviously AWS that are out there today that are worth looking at? So obviously, it's a really good question and I'm on, on everyone's minds. Unfortunately, you know, um, I've been amazed at how far Amazon's been able to come without having consistent brownouts and meltdowns, but there have been a few web other size problems over the summer, and it's on everybody's mind how to deal with that best. So um, uh, we don't know many large Amazon shops who aren't saying, we need to have some kind of plan B. We love Amazon, we love the features, it's great, but we need to be able to look at plan B. And then there are companies that have gone to plan B, so there are alternatives, um, Rackspace, SoftLayer, um, GoGrid, uh, are, are, you'd be surprised the bigger users are using a lot of those, and for good reason. They can call up someone and talk to them when there's a problem. Right, and, right, right. You know, and these, these companies tend to have smaller data centers, so if there are problems, they affect a smaller um, group of the people, and, and the outages just don't seem to be quite so bad because they're on a slightly, somewhat smaller scale. But um, we're seeing that there's a lot of interest in the Google uh, Compute Engine, and obviously Google put some announcements out this week around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're thrilled that it looks like there's going to be another viable competitor to Amazon at that scale. But increasingly we're seeing the biggest Amazon shops look at how much cloud do they need and how much base load do they have. And so these guys are looking at doing deals with people like Equinix, um, uh, Carpathia and Interaction um, to put um, uh, their base load in a colo and have a feature that Amazon supports called Direct Connect where you can connect directly to an Amazon zone and do all your stuff in the AZ. And in fact, if you've got a lot of stuff in the AZ and you're not sure how quite quickly you can migrate your base load into your data set, it's also a great idea because you can do it a bit at a time. Sure. And so these are the, are the leading edge of sophisticated planning. They look at compute in lumps of 15 minute, one hour, one year, three years, five years. And they say, do we really need to own this? Or can we just do like a three year lease or a one year lease? And it's a bit like a factory. It's like, do we need to make this? Or can we find someone else to make it? And those guys, it's very interesting, they're looking aggressively at SaaS vendors. So we have this, this discussion often with them. They're like, which, which, which email vendor do you recommend? Which DNS vendor do you recommend? Because we, th- we think we can get out of this without losing a lot of control or value. Sure. Uh, and it's really surprising how much big companies um, um, are using hosted products for some fairly critical functions. Very nice, very nice. And... <clears throat> So when it comes to the, the, the concept of that scalability, elasticity, because I, that's one of the big things in, in the customers I've been talking to here at the conference, how does your product help both track that and is there kind of alerts, alarms when people don't take advantage of it, right? Because that's where right. your potential cost overruns could really happen with AWS from, right. from well, everything I'm hearing, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so number one cause of, of there's, there's two big causes of overspending, unintentional overspending on any cloud service, but Amazon suffers from it the worst because they can scale the, the, the most. Um, the first one is um, you really didn't mean to do that. Right. We've seen areas where um, uh, auto scaling just done internally with internal script, not using Amazon's auto scale. I think it's turning instances off, but it's not. Right. Um, and, and stuff like that. 
And, and those are um, errors that pretty much every noob on the cloud, they're going to make something like that. Right. You know, um, I mean, when I was starting on the cloud, I was having multiple customers. Uh, I, I fired up some new instances. Uh, they didn't turn up on the customer's console. Oh, I've got the wrong key. I uh, turned on the right one, and then I forgot to turn off the old ones. I got $1,400 over it. So, you know, these are lessons that people are learning. But the other thing is, is that, that sometimes people aren't measuring it. They don't know about it. Right. So again, I'm sitting. Doing I get this big bill. Where did it come from? Yeah, we even a little one. <laughs> it's like we have a, we have we have we, we had an account. We've got certain tier discounts, and one of our engineers was firing up his own test instances. Yeah, and it's only when you get the expense claim in that you go, "What's going on here?" So we we work with finance departments um, to tell people they have to have their costs in a cloudability account before they get paid, and that gets you early on. So even if you do a sweep and get everyone in the system, um, when um, Bill turns up on Monday and he's not really paying much attention to the employee handbook. The first time he or she puts forward his claim, they get pushed into a cloudability account. And we have lots of features around that where you have a tribe of, of employees of the company. And when you log in from their network or with their email address, we automatically invite you to join that tribe. Right. So it's a very low cost exercise where the finance people don't even have to have any access to, per se to cloudability. Right. You just get invited to join. And then early next year, we're going to start doing some automatic budget alerts. So right now, you can add budget alerts. Mm -hmm. We're just going to put a couple in automatically. Yeah. Like, the, these are the ones 80%, yeah. 90% of the people want, yeah, yeah. use. This is going totally. to keep you from... Your, you know, your spending has gone up more than 30% in the last week, that kind yeah. of thing. Perfect. So you know, we'd love to hear from users um, what they think that should be. Uh, and we'll probably experiment with a few. But it's, it's obvious. Let's put a couple of easy ones in. Awesome. Yeah. And I just wanted to, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to keep this one nice and short. Um, but I just wanted to, to kind of say, yeah, in talking to customers this week, it seems like the, the two big areas of concern are always the pricing. And because it's just something, it's a, it's a new thing. If you're, if you're new to this kind of elastic cloud things like AWS, you, you just haven't been used to this pay-as-you-go model, right? And how do you prevent those $1,400 overages, right? And then the other one, of course, is is that SLA performance kind of things too, which everyone's kind of figuring out as well. And so um, it, it's really nice to see your company and your products and really addressing one of those just core needs we're hearing over and over Thank you. and yeah. over. And of course, right now today, uh, level one of computing, cloud computing, people are looking at cost. Level two is about efficiency. And then level three is about processes. Sure. About how do you change behaviors? Right. And we're seeing our earliest customers, uh, the, the most aggressive cloud adopters, is getting to level three right now. Right. And they're talking about, you know, how do we encourage coders to look at building these features into their deployment scripts so that they take advantage of this and that. Right. Um, and it's a really interesting journey. Uh, a lot of people are going to have an interesting five years ahead of them as they learn to think about this in a completely different way. Absolutely. Well, well cool. So, so Matt, um, real quick, where can everyone follow you, find out more about you or your company and your products? Well, uh, we're uh, at cloudability.com. We have a, a, a Twitter feed at, at, at cloudability. Uh, and, of course, I'm on Twitter, too, at Matt Ellis, with one T, M-A-T-E-L-L-I-S. Awesome. Thank you very much. So if you like the show, please tell a friend or leave us a review on iTunes. And real quick, going back to the last podcast, um, we are raising money for, for a charity for the North Carolina Children's Hospital. Um, Brian and I are doing a run in February that involves Krispy Kreme donuts and running. It's going to be interesting. But we have a $1,000 goal. Um, we are about 25% there already. Um, and we are actually matching dollar for dollar from the Cloudcast for the first $1,000. So if you like the show, if you it, would please consider uh, making a donation for the North Carolina Children's Home, we would certainly appreciate it. Just go to thecloudcast.net and uh, the link is, at, uh, excuse me, is in the upper right-hand corner of the page. So thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.